All right, let God be true and every man a liar. Uh, very difficult for me to understand. I've read all types of Bible hubs tonight on it, other websites. They seem to all be all over the place. It's very hard for me to understand this passage. I know that this is the Antichrist here in 27. When it talks about um, Messiah the Prince, no, therefore, because I've looked it up in the Greek, uh, it could be anything. Let's just look it up real quick in real time for you. You go to Bible Hub because y'all can do your own research on this. Go to Daniel. Let's key in 925. And you go down and you click tools to restore and rebuild Jerusalem. And it says the Messiah. And it says the Prince. So we're going to look up Messiah. Anointed one of the Messiah, Messianic Prince, which is Jesus, the King of Israel, which is Jesus. Now it gets into the high of the high priest of Israel, of Cyrus or King Cyrus, or of the patriarchs, or as anointed kings. And of course, there's anointed kings of Mystery Babylon or Satan. Uh, then you get into prince, leader, ruler, captain, prince, ruler, prince, prince, overseer, ruler, princely things. So there's nothing definite in the definitions at all. You have to take in the entire context of what's going on. Uh, Daniel wanted, through his supplications, he wanted Jerusalem restored. So if you just go back, Daniel, Daniel 9, King James Version, Bible Gateway. And what we can really do is um, we can go back and read this. In the New Living. A period of 70 sets of seven has been decreed for your people and for your holy city to finish their rebellion, to put an end to their sin, to atone for their guilt, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, to confirm the prophetic vision, to anoint the most holy place. Now listen and understand seven sets of seven plus 62 sets of seven will pass from the time the command is given to rebuild Jerusalem until a ruler, the anointed one, comes. Jerusalem will be rebuilt with streets and strong defenses despite perilous times. After this period of 62 sets of seven, the anointed one, will be killed, appearing to have accomplished nothing. And a ruler will arise whose armies will destroy the city and the temple. The end will come with a flood and war of its miseries are decreed from the time to the very end. That's talking about the very end times, of course. The ruler will make a treaty with people for a period of one set of seven, but after half of this time, he will put an end and set up the sacrilegious object that will cause desecration until the fate decreed for this defiler is finally poured out on him. And that's the end of Daniel 9. So, I can sit, I just say, let God be true and every man a liar. I can sit here and tell you that some of this is is Jesus and then the rest of it's the Antichrist or all of it's the Antichrist. 
I'm just not sure. It's it's out of my realm of understanding. I've read everything that you could imagine so far that I've read, and it just the more you read, the more confusing it gets. Let's read it in the King James. Know therefore and understand, and and we can go back to um, twenty four also. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression. Now, let's go ahead and look up that key word, transgression. And I can't guarantee you we're going to get any help from this either. Let's key in Daniel. 924 this time. To finish the transgression and make an end of sins. This is, in my opinion, the end times, the end of all sins. The transgression I told you was the abomination of desolation, in my opinion. Again, let God be true and every man a liar. I can tell you, I don't know which way is up when it comes to this. You'll just have to help me out. Transgression, rebellion, transgression against individuals, transgression against the nation, transgression against God. That's it, the abomination of desolation. In general, reconcile, you know, punishment, because don't forget the abomination of desolation. That's what this is all about. It's called the day of evil. Proverbs 16, 4, King James Version, Bible Gateway. The Lord have made all things for himself. Yes, even the wicked for the day of evil. This is known as the day of evil. So when you talk about the transgression, the transgression against God is the day of evil. It is known as the abomination of desolation. What is the abomination of desolation? Got questions. Daniel 9.25 got questions. There you go. It's a key biblical passage. It's the only Old Testament passage which refers to the Messiah as Messiah. Elsewhere, he is called uh, Shiloh, or the root of Jesse, the righteous branch, the prince of peace. So they're saying that, that, that this is Jesus. But by name, which he is known best, Messiah only appears in the passage. Here is an excerpt from that past 70 weeks are determined upon your people. So, you know, issuing the decree to restore, rebuild Jerusalem until the Messiah, the prince, will be uh, seven sevens and 62 sevens. It will be built again with the plaza and a moat until the time, even in times of distress. That's very key. Because what are these times of distress? Is this at the abomination of desolation? Or is this the, during the four horses when they're um, building the third temple and erecting it so he can perform the abomination of desolation? So this is all very confusing. After the 62 sevens, the Messiah will be cut off have to have uh, and have nothing. Will be cut off and have nothing, and the people of the prince who is to come will destroy the city and the sanctuary, which was done after Jesus died. They destroyed Jerusalem, um, 70 AD. Exactly what is meant by the 77 is the phrase by itself is ambiguous. So they sound confused, but taken in context, the meaning is clear. All right, good. Help us out. Daniel's prayer in the verses, yes, his lamentations to fulfillment of the specific 70-year period, the 70 years of the Babylonian captivity, as prophesied by Jeremiah, Daniel received the 77's prophecy in response to his prayer. The prophecy foretold a period of seven times 70 yet to come, which is 490 years, or 77 
or 77 year periods. 77 years or a period equals to 490 years. The prophecy goes on to say that from the issuing of the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the Messiah, the prince will be seven sevens, 49 and 62 sevens, 434. And after the 62 sevens, the Messiah uh, will be cut off and have nothing. Again, he's using uh, ESV uh, quotes, English Standard Version. That's usually what he uses, I think. Nebuchadnezzar had Jerusalem dismantled around 587 BC after having to put down two rebellions in there in less than 10 years. At the time of this prophecy was given, Jerusalem still lay in ruins according to the prophecy and the decree to rebuild Jerusalem. Therefore, uh, would be seven year periods, seven, seven year periods, and 62. Uh, more seven-year periods or 483 years until the Messiah would show up after the culmination of the 62 seven-year periods or after 483rd year, the Messiah would be cut off. That's Jesus' death. I like that. And um, that is why it's capitalized also, I do believe. Both the ancient Hebrews to whom Daniel was writing and to ancient Babylonians to whom uh, he was subservient, the book of Daniel having been written in Babylon during the later half of the 6th century BC, used a 360-day uh, year calendar. So 483 years times 360 is 173,880 days. This is the equivalent of 476 years and 25 days using our modern Gregorian calendar of 365-day years. As for our starting point, the Parisian uh, emperor uh, who ruled uh, issued the edict to rebuild Jerusalem sometime during the Hebrew month of Nisan in the 20th year of his reign or uh, for 4 5 BC, from 4 4 5 BC or 173880 days brings us to 30 AD. According to this prophecy, the Messiah would show up, present himself as Messiah to the nation, and then be cut off sometime near AD 30. This was fulfilled as Jesus presented himself as a nation of Israel. I like this. On Palm Sunday, it was crucified on preparation day, uh, Passover to Lamb. So the prophecy then goes on to say that subsequent to the Messiah being killed, the people of the prince who is to come will destroy the city and the sanctuary within one generation of Christ's crucifixion. Titus uh, raz Jerusalem and destroy the temple. Absolutely, 70 AD, here we go, like it. There is some debate about the exact date of the decree and began 483 years. There's also a debate about the days should be counted on our modern 365-day calendar, 360-day lunar calendar. Regardless, Daniel's prophecy lays out an amazing, accurate timeline. If we knew all the exact dates of Daniel prophecy and timing, uh, we would find it predicted the very day of Christ's death over 600 years before it occurred. Fantastic. What is the abomination of desolation? Well, he's talking about here in Daniel 9.27. And that's the Antichrist. And right here, he's talking about Jesus. It says Daniel 9.24 through 9.27. And he's just described that the whole thing, or he just described the whole thing referring to Jesus. And yet when you go to the abomination of desolation, Jesus referenced Daniel in his words on the Olivet Discourse. Uh, he refers to Daniel 9.27 right here. Um, regardless of whether the abomination of desolation is a person or a thing, Daniel predicted the following. A future ruler will make a treaty with the people of Israel terms of the treaty will be for a week, which will take a period of seven years or seven days. I looked it up into Greek. That week means seven days or seven years. Midway through this time, the ruler would gather his troops and, and put an end to the sacrifices and offerings in the temple. At the time, the ruler will desecrate the temple, setting up a sacrilegious object. <coughs> the desecration of the temple will continue until judgment of God finally uh, meted out the ruler and his followers uh, 1,290 days later, or three and a half years and one month later. 
Of course, Jesus said what? Unless I cut those days short, no flesh would be saved. So throw these days out as literal. Daniel's prophecies about the abomination of desolation seem to have at least partial fulfillment in 167 BC, of course. But you also have to understand that Daniel uh, speaks of all this stuff until the time of the end, which means in times. So the question becomes, when, after Jesus' day, was the abomination of desolation prophecy fulfilled, or are we still waiting for fulfillment? Uh, talks about preterist view, and then it says, um, uh, and Jesus and the warning in Matthew 24, 15, concerning the events leading up to the destruction of Israel in AD 70, that's very false. In this view, the abomination of desolation probably occurred during the, no. Why is that not real? Why is that not true? Well, now he's getting into the futurist view which is the abomination is still in the future. And Jesus referring to the Antichrist who will come at the end times and establish a covenant for seven years. When he breaks it by doing something similar to what Antiochus Epiphanes did in the temple, the sacrilegious object Jesus called the abomination of desolation could be the image of the beast. Well, of course, that the Antichrist right-hand man, the false prophet, will order and set up to be worshipped. Of course. They even use the words, of course. <laughs> period of course comma for matthew 24 15 to be yet future the temple in jerusalem will have to be rebuilt during the tribulation begins and that's when i get into where it talks about uh, the rebuilding of it even in troublous times so um jerusalem will be rebuilt with streets and strong defenses despite perilous times yeah during World War III, this will all be mounted because when he when he rever, reveals himself to be had risen from the dead, he has done so uh, to put a stop to World War III. So the World War III would be, in my opinion, the perilous times. So I like what he was saying in many regards, in many aspects. Looks like I destroyed today's Bible study. So let's do it again. I think we're going to 10 3. Is that it? Yes. Seventy weeks. Oh, let's go ahead and, and start with Daniel, and then we'll come back to it. Okay. This is a letter from Paul, chosen by the will of God. Of course, everything's the will of God to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. I've been sent out to tell others about the life He has promised through faith in Jesus Christ. I am writing to Timothy, my dear son, in Christ. May God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord give you grace, mercy, and peace which means salvation, salvation, and comfort from the Holy Spirit. Timothy, I thank God for you, the God I serve with clear conscience, just as my ancestors did night and day. I constantly remember you and my prayers. I long to see you again, for I remember your tears as we parted, and I will be filled with joy when we are together again. I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that I first uh, filled your grandmother's Lois and your mother Eunice. I share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And I know that same faith continues strong in you. This is why I remind you to fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. For God has given us a for God has not given us a spirit of fear and uh, being timid, but a power, love, and self-discipline. So never be ashamed to tell others about our Lord, and don't be ashamed of me either, even though I'm in prison for him. With the strength God gives you, be ready to suffer with me for the sake of the good news. 
Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Jesus Christ, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace from God and the Father and Jesus Christ, our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing, I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. I am persuaded that in thee also, you know, in that same faith. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee, by putting on of my hands. For God have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, near of me being his prisoner. Be thou partaker of his afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. All right, very good. So let's um, I've already read Daniel, I think, in the New Living. Let's go ahead and read Daniel now in the uh, King James. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression. That's the abomination of desolation. And then to make an end of sins, which that's the end times in Jesus' millennial reign. And to make reconciliation for iniquity. That brings an end to sin. And to bring everlasting righteousness. That is life with Jesus and God through thousand year millennial reign and then in new Jerusalem, which is eternity with God, the father and Jesus and to seal up the vision and the prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Okay. And to anoint the most holy. Is that talking about Jesus? To confirm the prophetic vision and to anoint the most holy place. Okay. Talking about Jerusalem, where Jesus will set up his thousand year millennial reign. So now, therefore, and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and rebuild Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, that could be the thousand year millennial reign, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks and the street shall be built again the wall even in troublous times see but even in troublous times let's go back and read it in the new living now listen and understand, 70 sets of seven plus 62 sets of seven will pass from the command which is given to rebuild Jerusalem until a ruler, the anointed one comes. Jerusalem will be rebuilt with streets and strong defenses despite perilous times. That could be Jesus. Um, what they were talking about, Jesus um, coming, the coming of Jesus that they nailed the exact time that Jesus came. After this period of 62 sets of seven, the anointed one will be killed, appearing to have accomplished nothing. I think that could be Jesus, right? Isn't that what they were talking about? I don't hate that. And after three score and two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come destroy the city and the sanctuary in the end with the flood. I got ahead of myself, didn't I? No. Okay. I just didn't finish 26 was the problem in the new living. So let me finish it after this period. Yes, it is working properly. When I hit it, it will bounce. See it bouncing? Bounce. Bounce. 
bounce, 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 bounce. It's working. After this period of 62 sets of seven, the anointed one will be killed, appearing to have accomplished nothing, and a ruler will arise whose armies will destroy the city and the temple. The end will come with a flood, and the war and its miseries are decreed from that time to the very end. That very end is very end times. Now, we know that there's a flood. The flood of Daniel 11. And with the force of a flood, they shall be swept away before him and be broken, and also the prince of the covenant. That's all talking about the Antichrist. Daniel 11, King James Version, Bible Gateway. All this stuff here is talking about the Antichrist. And the king shall do according to his will. He shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god. And he shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods. And shall prosper till the indignation, which is the abomination of desolation, be accomplished. For that is determined, shall be done. Neither shall he regard the god of his fathers, nor the desire of women. Or, or it's, it, it's the god of women or the god of any god. I, I've seen this broken down and, and we'll get to it when we do 11. It doesn't really mean what it sort of sounds like in the king's English, for he shall magnify himself above all, but in his estate he shall honor the God of forces, which is uh, Chibel, which is cybernetics, which is mixing man and machine, which is what it will all be about. And this is all king of the north, king of the south stuff, which is extremely difficult. So... Right before that, we break down 1135, just like we did yesterday, and some of them with understanding, which are sheep, shall fall because they are being weakened to try, it says to try them because they're about to go through the refining process and to purge them. They're about to get purged of their sins and to make them white because they're going to be then cleansed and shall be able to wear the white robes. It's the bride of Christ, even to the time of the end, which is the very when God puts an end to the great tribulation, which is all about cleansing the sheep, because it is yet for the time appointed. Acts 14.22, King James Version, Bible Gateway. It is known as the great tribulation, and yet confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that what? We must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom. Uh, what sheep are, are suffering tribulation today for the truth in God's word? Uh, about zero. Me and a few others, a few of y'all, right? Seriously. So we know that there's 800 million people on this earth that are sheep. That would be 1% of the 8 billion on this earth, right? It's a narrow way, and few be that find it. Well, what's a narrow way? What's 1% of the 100% of the 8 billion? That's about 800 million. Do you think there's 800 million people today that believe there's no free will and God's ordained the end from the beginning and that he loved and knew his sheep from before the foundation of the world? Absolutely not. So that's what the great tribulation is for. It's to purge them of their sins. So... <laughs> The great tribulation is for the church. As you see, you must, we must through much tribulation enter the kingdom. So this great tribulation of Daniel 11.35 then moves right in to the Antichrist. Okay. And in here, it speaks about a flood. In Daniel 11.22. Way up in here. And with the arms of a flood shall they be overflown from before him and shall be broken, yea, also the prince of the covenant, which, of course, is the Antichrist. That's what all this is about, is the Antichrist. 
and and notice there's no capital letters there so when you get back to daniel where it's talking about messiah the prince and how it is capitalized i like that now these bible verses are man-made that verse could end there the messiah the prince to rebuild jerusalem unto the messiah the prince shall be seven weeks and three score in two weeks the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times It could end there talking about Jesus and move into the Antichrist right there. The street shall be built again. That's right. For the Antichrist and the wall, which Trump always talks about that wall, even in troublous times. That could be during World War III. And after three score and two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off, not for himself and the people of the prince. Well, that could end another verse right there talking about Jesus, and now it could go back to the Antichrist. When do we go back and forth from Antichrist to Jesus to God, from Antichrist to God to Jesus, back to God to Jesus to Antichrist? When do we do that? Daniel 7, King James Version, Bible Gateway. Daniel 7 goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, talking about the Antichrist and talking about God, and the Antichrist and talking about God. Here's the horn, the Antichrist, with a mouth speaking great things. Next verse, I beheld little thrones were cast down in the ancient of days, which is God. Did sit whose garment was as white as snow. That's God right after the Antichrist. And the hair of his head was like pure wool. That's God the Father. And his throne was like a fiery flame. That's God the Father. And a fiery stream issued and came down before him, and thousands and thousands ministered unto him, and thousands, ten times thousands stood before him, and judgment was set, and the books were open. That's God. And now we're right back to the Antichrist again. And I beheld, because of the voice, the great words that the horn spake. That's back to the Antichrist. All Daniel 7 is back and forth between God and the Antichrist from verse to verse. I'm not so sure that's not what is happening again in the book of Daniel. I'm just not sure. Let God be true and every man a liar. Take it to prayer. I'm doing the best I can, people. But this is this is absolutely, positively the most difficult items you'll ever come across in the Word of God. Absolutely. Absolutely mind-blowing. So forget these verse numbers. The verses were man-made. All it was was the words um, in the Hebrew or the Aramaic. Daniel was written in Aramaic. As a collection of Aramaic court tales later explained by Hebrew revelations. The court tales may have originally circulated independently. Book of Daniel, Wikipedia. It's hard to trust Wikipedia when it comes to this kind of stuff. Um, chapter one was composed in Aramaic at this time. So some of it was in uh, Aramaic. I think some of it was in Hebrew. So it gets very, very, well, we can look at all of it in blue letter, but I don't want to turn this into an hour study. But um, as, as this floats back and forth um, from thought to thought, it could be going back and forth between Jesus and the Antichrist. Because I like what Got Question said, you know, as far as being a perfect timeline for Jesus and restoring the... Um, for the bringing about of Jesus and how it was prophesied in the book of Daniel. I, I love that. But there's other things they talk about, which I don't love, or I'm not sure that I fully understand. So uh, 
Know therefore, and from the going on of the commandment to rebuild Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks and threescore unto two weeks, and the, and the street shall be built again, even the wall, even in troublous times. Very difficult, very ambiguous. And after three score and two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself? That could be Jesus right there. End of story. Move on to something else. And the people of the prince, that could be the people of the Antichrist, shall come and destroy the city and the sanctuary. That's times of the Antichrist. And the abomination of desolation. And the end there, and the end. Now you're talking about the end times. And the end, the end, the end times, the end. Shall be with a flood. And unto the end, we just got through reading about the flood in Daniel 11, where it was all about the Antichrist. So you're all over the place with this. And unto the end of the war, desolations, the abomination of desolation, are determined. And he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. You look up that word in the Greek, it stands for seven days or seven years. Everybody assumes seven years? I absolutely do not. When he is returned from the dead and he's in that temple, he might, um, he might decree something for seven days. And, after, and in the middle of those seven days, he might pop up and perform the abomination of desolation for the whole world to see. This is after World War III now. So there's just no telling what's going to be going on. You have to be very open-minded as you stay within the truth, which I don't know how you walk that thin line. It's just it's, it's as difficult as anything I've ever come across. And he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of that week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblations to cease. Well, how long do you think this third temple is going to be up? Seven years? You think they're going to rebuild this temple during World War III because it didn't build yet? And he's going to, and Trump's going to perform the abomination of desolation? Is World War III going to last seven years? Or is it going to last three and a half years? It would literally have to last at least. That's a lot, y'all. It, it, it gets to be nutty. And he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. Well, when would he cause these daily sacrifices to cease? Makes way more sense to me that it would be in the middle of seven days. And the overspreading of abominations, there it is, the abomination of desolations. He shall make it desolate. The abominations of desolations mind blowing even un until the consummation and it be determined shall be poured upon it desolate abomination of desolation Matthew 24, 15, King James Version, Bible Gateway. When ye, uh, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Antichrist is going to be standing in the third temple. Our body's a holy place. Yeah. Our body is the temple of God if you're a sheep, but to the Jew who's keeping the Torah and doesn't know Jesus yet, the temple is the holy place. That's why Jesus says in the next verse or two, y'all that be in Judea flee because it's taking place there. That's why. Tells them, don't even go back in their house and grab anything.
Anyway, let's move on to chapter 10, please. In the third year of Cyrus, the king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar by the Babylonians and Medes and Persians. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long, and he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. I love y'all very much. Ask questions anytime. That's what I'm here for.